I'm about to proceed. So the plan, inshallah, you know, on the 30th we'll be off. Uh, 23rd, which is uh, next week, we, we, we're on. We, we will have a class next week on the 23rd, inshallah. Uh, and the 30th will be off, and then we will come back and resume our classes. And the plan is to try and finish the uh, fiqh of financial transactions of fiqh of commerce. Uh, prior to Ramadan, prior to the beginning of Ramadan, inshallah, so that when we break for Ramadan, uh, then we come back and uh, start the fiqh of inheritance, uh, which will be followed by the fiqh of family, followed by the fiqh of foods, oaths, uh, and then uh, penalties, uh, jihad, judiciary, in this order. Uh, We've gone over the fiqh of family before, but we'll repeat it, inshallah. The fiqh of inheritance, I'm not quite sure I'm, uh, you know, if, if people will be interested. And, and, uh, huh? you, you'll be interested? Okay. Uh, so inshallah, that will be after Ramadan. We'll go over the fiqh of inheritance. Um, but, uh, in, you know, today, inshallah, we will have two chapters. Uh, we're not, in, you know, it's not like because we are in a rush, we want to finish before Ramadan, but these two chapter, chapters are somewhat smaller chapters. It's not much going on. Uh, there's always much going on in fiqh, you know. <laughs> it depends on... Uh, but at, at any rate, we all have, they're related anyway. al and al it, the, the, you could see the similarity in the, the structure of the two words because they're coming, they're coming back from laqata or iltaqata, which means to pick, to pick. Laqata, iltaqata, to pick. So when you pick up something, iltaqatahu. So laqata is something that you picked, laqit is something that you picked, but because they are different, they are given different names. This is a property that you picked up. This is an abandoned child that you picked up. Uh, so, lokata is lost property, lost and found property. al laqit is an abandoned child that was found by someone. It's called foundling. So, lost and found property and foundlings. First, the chapter on al lokata Babu al lokata lost and found property. Al-Imam uh, al-Qadamah rahimahullah ta'ala who died in the year 620 after Hijrah said in his book Al-Umda or Umda al-Fiqh wa hiya ala thalathati adrub this lost and found property is of three different types ahaduha ma taqillu qiymatuhu fa yajuzu akhzuhu wal intifa'u bihi min ghayri ta'rifin li qawli Jabir radiyallahu an رخص لنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في العصا والصوت والحبل وأشباهه يلتقطه الرجل ينتفع به. There are three types of lokata. Uh, first, it is it is permissible to to take something of insignificant value and benefit from it, use it, without announcing it. The proof for this is the statement of Jabir radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam permitted us to pick up sticks, whips, ropes, and similar objects, and to benefit from them. Sticks, ropes, whips, and similar objects, and to benefit from them. Uh, because otherwise, it would be debilitating. If you will have, if everything that you find, if you find like uh, a dime or five cents or something on the floor. And then you will have to announce it for a year. Go every like day to the masjid and announce it. Uh, that is debilitating, you know. So things of insignificant value, uh, Jabir said, and this was reported by Abu Dawood and its controversial authenticity, but the scholars act upon it. And the Prophet wasallam also was, Anas said that the Prophet ﷺ was walking and he found the date and he said, Had I not feared that it is from the dates of Sadaqah, I would have eaten it without announcing it. So if you find like the, the you know, like a tangerine or orange or banana, apple in the masjid, for instance, uh, not necessarily in the masjid, you have to ask for permission if it is. 
if it is in, a, in an area where like uh, that's owned and but if you find it in the street uh, you could eat it without asking but if there is if you if you think it belongs to somebody or if you think a permission is needed then you, you need to ask uh, for permission unless it is customary uh, that that people can you know like when when some people leave like candy for instance in a bowl uh, you know, and it is customarily known that this is just for anyone t to, to have. Um, but if you find something that is, that is uh, left in the street, a property that is left in the street, then what matters here is the scholars, you know, say when it comes to uh, that which is of insignificant value, because what is meant by insignificant value? You remember the usuli, the 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 qaad al the legal maxim that we addressed before we discussed it before. Malam yahuddahu al-shara yahuddu bil-arf, that which has not been designated or delineated or demarcated or specified by the shara. Uh, will be uh, sort of uh, delineated by al uh, which is the customs, normative customs, uh, or people's norms. So whatever is considered to be of insignificant value, and they say insignificant value would be مَا لَا تَتْبَعُهُ هِمَمُ أَوْصَاتِ النَّاسِ مَا لَا تَتْبَعُهُ هِمَمُ أَوْصَاتِ النَّاسِ Himam is from Himma, drive, you know, awsat is from wasat, middle, plural of wasat, middle, nas is people, ma la tatba'ahu, that which is not followed. Uh, so, you know, meaning that average, the average person would not be searching for it, would not be seeking it, pursuing it, looking for it if he lost it. The average person would come back, you know, if you see if you're driving down the, the street, what is it called? Let's go into Park Street, Park. huh? Olson Avenue, and the, and you find, uh, for instance, a kufi. Uh, you find a kufi. Can you pick it up and take it? You are like that. You likely can pick it up and take it. Do you need to announce it? Likely, you don't need to announce it. The average person will not come back and look for it, right? Depends on the person. <laughs> well, depends on the kufi as well. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, but but you get it because uh, we can disagree from. Uh, you can finish the whole hour disagreeing over this. What the average person to, will do. Uh, but but that is the, that is the the parameter here. Uh, the average person would not be looking for it. Average person would not be looking for it. During the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they gave those examples. Sticks, whips, ropes, things of that nature. Uh, that's the first thing. So he, the, there are actually three uh, things that he will say. Things of insignificant value. Well, actually, you can make it a, uh, a binary division here. Insignificant. And we're done with this. Insignificant value, take it, use it, don't worry about it. There is one caveat here. If you still have it, and the person comes back and wants it, and you still have it, you have not disposed of it, you still have the actual thing, then you have to give it back to them. The actual thing. OK. Uh, but if you've disposed of it already, you are not you don't have to give them the value of it. You don't have to compensate them for it. Now, significant is two things. So that's, the total will be three. Significant is two things. One thing is animals that can defend themselves. You know, animals, uh, large animals, the large animals that can defend themselves. Add to large animals that can defend themselves things that are like, 
you know, heavy, like a, a, a pot that is so heavy and, and if you leave it, no one will just pick it up and take it. It's going to be there until someone comes back and, uh, and looks for it. So things of that nature, you know, nowadays cars in the street, you know, people leave this. It's not look at them. So, uh, so large animals that can defend themselves. And then here uh, would be other significant things, which is, you know, smaller animals and any property that has value, property of uh, value. Okay, so the, uh, these are the three here. Insignificant, significant, but large animals that can defend themselves are things that will not be taken, you know. Um, and then smaller animals and property of value would be the third thing. And the sheikh said here, uh, in, in terms of the second, which is large animals that can defend themselves, الثاني, الحيوان الذي يمتنع بنفسه من صغار السباع كالإبل والخيل ونحوها. Second, an animal such as a camel or a horse capable of protecting itself from small predators. Small predators. And certainly small predators because no one will be able to protect themselves from a lion or something. Uh, but small predators. It is forbidden to take such animals. Uh, this is because the Prophet ﷺ was once asked about stray camels and he said, فلا يجوز أخذ أخذها لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سئل عن ضلة الإبل فقال ما لك ولها دعها معها حذاؤها وسقاؤها تلد الماء وتأكل الشجر حتى يأتيها ربها because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was once asked about stray camels and he said uh, it is none of your concern stray camels none of your concern it has its water reservoir and its feet and it will reach water and drink it and eat off the trees until its owner returns to it, until its owner returns to it. Just leave it. Because it will be able to protect itself from small predators. It will be able to fend for itself. It will be able to sustain itself. Leave it. Don't bother it. And this was reported by Bukhari and Muslim from uh, Zaid ibn Khalid radiallahu anhu. وَمَنْ أَخَذَ هَذَا لَمْ يَمْلِكْهُ وَلَزِمَهُ ضَمَانُهُ وَلَمْ يَبْرَأْ إِلَّا بِدَفْعِهِ إِلَى نَائِبِ الْإِمَامِ Whoever takes such an animal does not own it and is held liable for it, the person would only be cleared of liability after surrendering it to the imam's deputy or the proper authorities. Uh, Okay, so large animals now. Large animals. What, what do you do? Uh, according to the Hanbali Madhab, you leave it, and you, if you take it, you will not own it, even after you announce it for one year. And if you take it, you have erred, committed wrongdoing, and you will be liable for the price of this animal, even if you are announcing it. You'll be liable in the sense that you, uh, if, if the animal dies without your negligence, without your transgression, which is the animal dies, you owe uh, the you uh, you owe the man the, the value of this. You owe the, the owner the right for owner the value of this camel because you should have left it. You should have not touched it. So you're liable. You're wrong. And the only thing that will clear you of liability is to surrender it to the imam or the deputy imam. Surrender it to the imam or the deputy imam. Or if it was lost, the value of it, pay the value of it to the imam or the deputy imam. That's the only thing that will clear you. Now, the imam means authorities, by the way. The imam means the authorities. So whichever authorities that are there, you just get. So the best thing that you do here is just give it to the, you know, you either leave it or give it to the imam. And we'll come to, to discuss their disagreement over uh, this, the, this ruling. The imam or the authorities, they have the right to pick up anything, anything. 
and not announce it, but not take it for themselves. They'll have the right to pick up anything and keep it or sell it and keep the value for the rightful owner if they showed up. But the imam does not need to announce it. Why is it that the imam does not need to announce it? The authorities do not need to announce it because the natural thing for someone who lost the property is to go to the authorities. So the, 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 the person who lost the property is the person who is to go to the authorities and ask about his property or her property, not that the authorities will go out to the masajid and, and announce it. Uh, so, but then uh, this, this ruling regarding large animals and where the Prophet ﷺ said this, uh, this is a particularly interesting fiqhi disagreement because now uh, Uthman radiallahu anhu during the time of Uthman radiallahu anhu Uthman told them to pick them up to pick camels up his stray camels to pick them up and to not leave them and Uthman did this radiallahu anhu not basically to defy the command of the Prophet ﷺ, but rather out of recognition of the change of times, change of circumstances. So he, he said, he figured that the manat here is the best interest of the rightful owner, that the ruling hitches on or hinges on the manat, you know, with, you know the, which is the, the effective cause. Effective cause here is the best interest of the rightful owner. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Leave it, because it, if you leave it, if you if you pick it up, if you take this ray camel, and, and the rightful owner comes back, they will be dismayed, upset, <coughs> you know, worried about their camel until they find you. Maybe they will not be able to find, you know, just leave it." You know, they come back and they find their, also they may need it, you know, if you, if you find it in the desert or something and you pick it up, they may need it and now they'll have to walk, maybe they can't walk, so just leave it alone. And the, you know, the owner will find it, it will find the owner, they'll find each other. And that, is the best, that was the best interest of the owner at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, felt that nowadays, because Medina had become a cosmopolitan city by the time of Uthman radiallahu anhu versus the time of the Prophet وسلم, when it was like sort of a small town uh, and there were many people in Medina during the time of Uthman radiallahu anhu that were just like uh, sort of uh, not originally from in Medina and the, the, he feared that the, maybe there is more theft, uh, less, less honesty than the time of the Prophet Sallallahu etc., etc. So Uthman said, pick them up, take them, give them to the authorities, uh, announce them, all of that stuff. So then the, the scholars disagreed. So the Shafi'is and the Hanbalis, they said, they maintain the original one. The original ruling is, leave them alone. The Hanafis said, no, pick them up. The Malikis said, the Malikis sometimes like to be nuanced. <laughs> so they said, if, if it is uh, close to town, close to town, you know, it's, it's different from being in the desert or close to town. Close to town, pick it up. Being out in the desert, leave it. So they agreed with the Shafi's and Hanbalis for the out in the desert, out in the sort of wilderness. And they agreed with the Hanafis if it was close to town. So nowadays, uh, yes. Um, is it mean if you know that this is a domesticated uh, uh, beast of bourbon? Or like, let's say that you can tell it's a wild animal, so you want to take it for your possession? Well, if, if it is a wild animal, then uh, if it is a wild animal, it is a lukata, it is lost and found property if someone had already caught it and it ran away. But if no one had already caught it and it, uh, you know, and you're the first one to catch it, then it's certainly yours. Uh, 
but we're talking about domestic ones here. Well, yeah, so you you could do the uh, you know the patchwork. Uh, sometimes, like uh, as I said, you know patchwork is not a problem uh, between the mazahab. You could say that well, let's uh, we can maintain the Shafi and Hanbali position as the default because it is the outright statement of the Prophet وسلم, And then if we fear. If we fear that it may be stolen, if we, in our assessment, in our judgment, we fear it may be stolen, we can take the Hanafi position. And then the Maliki position would give us that nuance. You know, when, we, when should we be more afraid that it will be stolen? Uh, if it is closer to town, and then, you know, it is, the likelihood of it being stolen would be greater than if it is out in the desert. Also, if it is closer to town, or if it is out in the desert or the wilderness, the rightful owner may come back and really want it uh, to complete their journey, so just leave it, and, and, and so on. So th that would be uh, permissible. So large animals, you know, this patchwork would be, would be then permissible, because as we said before, patchwork is permissible unless you come up with a position that will be in conflict with everybody and, uh, you know, counter to the consensus. Uh, or you, you, you use double standards, you, you move back and forth between positions basically uh, for your self-interest. So you use like a, you know, whichever position that will agree with your self-interest. And in this case, it would not be, the patchwork would not be uh, permissible. Um, Okay, so you, you will not own it if you take it, you will be liable, you'll have to return it or return its value, and uh, you have to give it to the imam, and the, the, you know, all of the fiqh of this chapter is basically pushing you to just give it to the authorities because otherwise it is really complicated. It is complicated, and if you think you found something and then you'll really, uh, you know, uh, don't get too excited if you find something. And that's what they're trying to tell you here. Because it, it belongs to the rightful owner. Whenever they come back, it will be theirs. Uh, so don't get too excited. Um, and, uh, and, and certainly in Mu'ahid, in Mu'ahid, which is the covenant non-Muslim, is like the Muslim in this regard, because the Prophet ﷺ said, لا حل ذناب من السباع ولا الحمار الأهلي ولا لقة المعاهد إلا أن يستغني عنها. So, لا حل ذناب من السباع. Every, every predatory animal with, with canine teeth is not permissible, meaning not permissible to eat, and domestic donkeys are not permissible to eat, and the luqata, the lost the property of al-mu'ahid, the covenant non-Muslim, is not permissible to take unless they give it up, they abandon it, or they give it up. And even if the Muslim abandons it or gives it up, then it's, it's yours. Okay. And that's the, that is, by the way, all the time. If the Muslim abandons their camel, you could take it. You know, if they, if they abandon their camel because they just can't sustain it, and they left it in the desert, and you found, you found it, and they just can't feed it, so they abandoned it, or they, uh, you know, then you can take it, because then you, you're actually sort of like ahya mawatan. It is like someone who gives life to, uh, or saves the life of uh, an animal, and in the, then it becomes uh, yours. Now the sheikh then said, the, the third type, he said, الثالث ما تكثر قيمته من الأثمان والمتاع والحيوان الذي لا يمتنع من صغار السباع فيجوز, أخذ فيجوز أخذه ويجب تعريفه حولا في مجامع الناس كالأسواق وأبواب المساجد. Third, valuable items, significant sums of money, property and animals that cannot protect themselves from small predators, it is permissible to take these things, but one must announce having found them for one year in public places such as the entrances of the markets and uh, mosques. Uh, 
entrances. He said the entrances. So if this is the, the this is what he's talking about, number three now, smaller animals, if you found a sheep or goat or something, and property of value, uh, you found the laptop, for instance, then what you can do is you can take it, you can take it. In this case, you will need to announce it for one year. He said uh, you announce it for one year. And this announcing for one year, they disagreed over you know, the frequency of announcement. And one, one suggested scheme for announcement is once a day for one week, once a week for one month, and then monthly for the rest of the year. Once a day for one week, once a, you know. But nowadays, it's a little bit different. The type of announcing is different. And they said that you announce it in the markets and at the entrances of the masjid. Entrance of the masjid. So you stand here and announce it. Because they did not allow announcement inside the masjid. They did not allow announcement inside the masjid. Because in masjid, masjids were not built for that purpose. The Prophet وسلم, said, uh, من سمع, uh, من سمع if you hear someone announcing his lost property in the masjid, then say to them, may Allah never return it to you, because the masjids are not meant for that. Because the masjids are not meant for that. So now, this is a little bit different from what we're talking about here. This is announcing for self-interest. What the Prophet Sallallahu is talking about is someone who lost the property, and now they come to the masjid, and then if the masjids will be basically, if, if everybody who loses something will go to the masjid, everybody who wants to sell something will go to the masjid and stand by the member and address the people, then, be, you know, the masjid will be overtaken for these self-interest and commerce and all kinds of businesses that don't pertain to the, you know, the mission of the masjid or the, the you know, the vision of the masjid. So the Prophet said, you, you say that to them. But this is something, somebody who is looking for something for, that is his. What about if you found something, not lost something, if you found something, can you announce it in the masjid? The majority said no, but this is a no of karaha, not no of tahreem. You know, in, in the mazhab it is clear that this is makruh, not haram. Makruh, not haram. Wait a second. Even if you're announcing for self-interest, it is a no of karaha, not no of tahreem. Whether it is for self-interest or not self-interest, it's makruh, makruh. It is disliked. But in the Maliki Madhab, and I, that's why I said in the beginning, they like to be sometimes nuanced. In the Maliki Madhab, there is a little bit of nuance here, uh, where Imam Malik said about someone who found the property, not someone who lost the property, someone who found the property that if he walks around to tell the people in the masjid without raising his voice, if he walks around the masjid and telling the people that he had found something without raising his voice, he said that I think that this may be permissible, that there would be no harm if he does this, if he announced it without raising his voice. Uh, what we can do nowadays, the lobby of the masjid does not belong to the masjid, so any lost property, we could basically have uh, the, you know, like a, uh, an announcement, written announcements of lost properties hung up on the wall in the lobby of the masjid, because that is not part of the waqf of the masjid customarily. Customarily, the prayer hall is the waqf of the masjid, the rest of the masjid customarily, and preferably when you build the masjid, uh, the waqifun, they need to designate that this is the masjid, the rest is the Islamic center. You know, that is not designated as a masjid, so that we don't have to run into all of the complexities of the rulings of the masjid 
you know, which, which uh, there is, you know, a number of them. Okay, so, uh, but when they find the watch in the wudu place and they come, you know, the imam, you know, says we found this watch and something, you don't make a big deal out of it because according to the Malikis, that may not be a problem. And according to the rest, it is makru. It's not haram, so don't get too agitated. You know, so yes, because a lot of agitated people nowadays. Uh, it is, it is makro, but it, it may even be permissible if that is not announcing your lost property, someone announcing he found something that they found. Okay, then the Sheikh said, Rahimahullah. فمتى جاء طالبه فوصفه دفع إليه بغير بينة وإن لم يعرف فهو كسائر ماله ولا يتصرف فيه حتى يعرف وعاءه ووكاءه وصفته فمتى جاء طالبه فوصفه دفع إليه أو مثله إن كان قد هلك Whenever anyone comes out seeking it and correctly describes it then it should be given to the seeker without requiring the presentation of further evidence correctly describes it. He tells you, you know, I lost a goat. You found a goat. Someone tells you I lost a goat that has the, like a white goat that has like a little bit of a black spot on the left thigh, the inner left thigh. It's yours. You know, I mean, it's, go take it. Because in the first place, you, they had no owner. You found it. Here is someone who came and described the goat just like the goat that you he takes it, or she takes it. Um, they don't need to present an evidence uh, or proof. Okay, where are we? Okay, without requiring the presentation of evidence. If no one asks for it, then it becomes the finder's property. It becomes the finder's property. After the one year, you've announced it for one year, no one came and asked for it. No one came and asked for it. Or nowadays, if, if, you know, in our modern times, how do we apply this? Yeah, the best thing that you could do is to take it to the authorities. The authorities will have it. Authorities will have it. If someone goes and, and, and seeks it or looks for it, they'll give it to him. If no one takes it for one year, the authorities will then give it back to you. Is that easy? Easy. So we can take the same rulings and apply them in a different context. In our modern context, that would be the application. That would be the application. Um, if it is not known, then you will take it. If, if, no, one, if uh, no one sees it, if, no, if the rightful order does not show up within the first year, you can take it. Does that mean, does that, mean that the right of the rightful owner was dropped you know, after the one year? No, it doesn't mean that. It means you could take it, you could use it, you could sell it, yet you, you owe it or owe its value to the owner whenever they show up. So you could take it with that in mind. Could use it, sell it, it's fine. Eat it, whatever you want. Uh, but six, uh, 25 years later, Somebody shows up and says, you know what, I lost something here. You owe the value to that order. Uh, then the sheikh said, uh, if no one asks for it, then it becomes the finder's property. Before disposing of it, though, the finder has to note its features, such as its case, strap, and so on, so that when its seeker comes and describes it correctly, the finder returns it uh, or its exact like if it is lost or damaged. He said here the exact like if it's lost or damaged, if this is a mithli, if this is a qimi, then he will return the value. The, you remember when we talked about mithli and qimi, mithli is the like. Mithli are substitutable things, fungibles. Qimi, non-substitutable things non-fungibles, which you can't re find the exact substitute of them, but you could find, you could, you know, their value. 
So if you can find the exact substitute of them, then you, you, you owe the exact substitute to the rightful owner. If not, then you owe the value to the rightful uh, owner. But before you dispose of it, you have to make a sort of a, like a mental image, or actually better yet, to record the, you know, huh? I'll just take a picture. Take a picture, yes. Uh, yeah, that actually makes sense. Uh, I, 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 know I was going to say, you know, record the, the sort of the string, the case, the string, and the way how, that's all about, you know, if someone, they, they used to put them in those sacks, the, the money in. Uh, so anyway, take a picture. I have a question. Yes. Um, would you give them the value of it, like let's say they come to the 20, yeah, 25 years later, would you give them the value of it when you first found it or 25 years later? Okay, when you, an when you announce it, that is when you are meant to return it to them. So the value when you announce it. During that first Yes, oh. when you announce it. But, but, if you were not meant to pick it up, if you are not meant to pick it up, then you, what, you, what you owe them is the exact thing. If you are not meant to pick it up, what you owe them is the exact thing. So you give them, you owe them now the exact thing or the value of that thing today when they came and asked for it. This is a difference between something that you are meant to take and something that you are not meant to take. If you were meant to take it, if you are allowed to take it, that's one story. If you are not allowed to take it, or you took it, and you were allowed to take it, but you took it for yourself not to announce it, then you're in the wrong. That's a different story. In the first story, <clears throat> you owe them the value of it on the first day you announce it. In the second story, when you were, where you were not meant to take it, or you took it for yourself, or you, or you failed to announce it, you owe them the exact thing or the value of it on the day they come and ask for it. So then, you'll take a picture, you will know what it looked like exactly, because if someone comes back 20 years later and asks for it, they are entitled to it, to its like, or to its value, in this order. To it, to its like, to its value. Then the Sheikh said, وَإِنْ كَانَ حَيْوَانًا يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى مُؤْنَةٍ أَوْ شَيْئًا يَخْشَى تَلَفَهُ فَلَهُ أَكْلُهُ قَبْلَ التَّعْرِيفِ أَوْ بَيْعُهُ ثُمَّ يُعَرِّفُ لِمَا رَوَى زَيْدُ بْنُ خَالِدْ قال سُئِلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَنْ لُقَطَةِ الذَّهَبِ وَالْوَرِقِ فقال عرفوا عاءها وعفاصها ثم عرفها سنة فإن جاء طالبها يوما من الدهر فادفعها إليه وسأله عن الشاه فقال خذها فإنما هي لك أو لأخيك أو للذئب If the lost object is an animal that needs to be fed or is a perishable item that may go bad then the finder may first consume it or sell it and then announce it this is based on Zayd ibn Khalid's narration, which states, when Allah's Messenger was asked about picking up lost gold or silver, he told them, keep note of the string and the container, and then announce it, or announce, uh, announce your finding of it for one year. If, it, if its seeker comes by, a, by, comes by at any time, give it to him or her, he asked him also about sheep, and he indicated, take it, it is for you or for your brother or for the wolf, or for the wolf. So the idea here is sometimes you find something of value and you take it, but it is not like gold or silver, it is not a property that you could just keep it for the owner. We said if it is a property that you could keep for the owner, in the first year, you have to announce it. You have to keep it and announce it for the first year. After the first year, you have the option of keeping it, selling it, using it. You have all these options. But then you will owe the, 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 the like or the value 
whenever the rightful owner shows up. But what if the property that you found is perishable item, perishable items, or animals that need sustenance? Animals that need sustenance. What could you do in this case? Perishable items, animals that need sustenance. If it is a perishable item, the idea here is the interest of the rightful owner takes priority. If it is a perishable item, then you will have one of two options. One of two options. Sell, eat. If it is an animal that needs sustenance, you have one of three options. Sell, eat, keep. And if you're going to keep, you ought to sustain the animal because you can't let the animal die uh, you know, of starvation. You ought to sustain the animal. You must sustain the animal. And in this case, you sustain the animal from your money or, or you know, if you, what are you going to do? You sustain the animal with the intention. If you don't have that intention, then it is coming out of your money. But if you have that intention, at the time you sustain the animal, you have the intention that if the rightful owner shows up, you will ask them for the maintenance of the animal, then you could do that. You're entitled to that. So you spend on the animal until the rightful owner comes up, and then you could ask them for whatever you have pay, paid, whatever money you have spent on the animal. So sell or eat perishable items, sell, eat, keep for animals. That is the uh, classification here. And what matters is what? The best interest of the rightful owner. You're doing what is in the best interest of the rightful owner. Uh, then the Sheikh said, وَإِنْ هَلَكَتَ اللُّقَطَ فِي حَوْلِ التَّعْرِيفِ مِنْ غَيْرِ تَعَدٍ فَلَا ضَمَانَ فِيهَا If the item is lost or damaged during the year of announcement without transgression, تَعَدٍ or tafrit, it's always ta'addin or tafrit, transgression. Like transgression is what? Negligence. Uh, ta'addi is when you do something bad. Negligence is when you don't do something. Ta'addin is when you do something that you are not supposed to do. Negligence is when you don't do something you were supposed to do. Is that clear? Yeah. So whether it is ta'addin or tafrit, transgression or negligence. Uh, if, if the item is lost or damaged during the year of announcement without transgression, ta'addin, on the part of the one who picked it up, then the finder bears no liability for it. Because you're a good doer. Ma'ala al-muhsinina min sabil. Allah says ma'ala al-muhsinina min sabil. There will be no uh, liability uh, or blame against the muhsinin, the good doers. You cannot be blamed. You cannot be held liable if you're just a good doer. So you're announcing it for one year. But you, if you announce it for one year and you have it for one year, and then you, you lose it within the one year without transgression or negligence, that's it. You're not responsible. You're not, because you are keeping it as what? A trustee. Yad the amana or yad the ariya. Yad the amana where you consider it a trustee or a borrower, you are considered a trustee, not a borrower. The trustee is not liable unless they commit transgression or negligence. What about after the one year? After the one year? Let us say after the one year, the, the sheep dies. The goat dies after one year. And then three years later, you know, the rightful owner shows up. Where is my goat? You know, yeah, you know, I lost the goat, white, black spot on the left eye, uh, uh, side. In the Statute of limitations. Yeah. No, there is not here. Huh? God gives and God takes. God gives and God takes. No, actually, you're liable. Why? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, okay, but you, 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 like after the one year, you, be, you, you, it became, 
uh, you became uh, sort of the owner of it, s s somehow another owner of it. An owner contingent upon not finding the rightful owner. And since you were given the right to use it, the right to sell it, the right to eat it, you're liable for it. You become responsible. So after the one year, if you don't want it, give it to the authorities, eat it, it sell it. OK, well, it died. I, I, and with me or with the owner? It's not, I no, usually goats get eaten before they, get the, die, they die. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like all the goats have to die. They, they get slaughtered. Do I have to take it? Huh? Do I have to find the lost item? Do I have to take it and think what should I do with the best? Do you have to take it? No, you don't have to take it unless it is an animal or something living, a living creature that will otherwise be subject to demise if you don't. But, but generally speaking, you don't. Uh, but then, if people, it is very easy. Take it to the authorities, surrender it to the authorities, pick up anything and give it to the authorities. Because the, the whole chapter, I told you in the beginning of the chapter, they mean to tell you when you find something, don't get too excited, yes. it's complicated. Take it, give it to the authorities. If the authorities want to be Sharia compliant, then the authorities will keep it for one year and then give it back to you after the, the year is over. You know, if they're really that honest. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, if you were not meant to take it, keep in mind, the first year is, is for the person who, who, who took, pick it, picked it up. He was meant to pick it up and picked it up with the intention of announcing it and was actually announcing it. If you fail at any one of those three steps, if you were not meant to pick it up, if you picked it up without the intention of announcing it, or if you fail to announce it, then you're liable even within the first year. You're liable even within the first year. So if it dies at any time, you're liable even within the first year. Now quickly, al foundlings, فصل في اللقيد فاوندينغز هو الطفل المنبوذ وهو محكوم بحريته واسلامه وما وجد عنده من المال فهو له. A laqid is an abandoned child or foundling. The legal ruling concerning the child is that he or she is free and is Muslim. And uh, any money found with the child belongs to him or her. Any money found with the child belongs to him or her. And then the Sheikh said, The guardianship goes to the child's finder, if the finder is a trustworthy Muslim. Uh, the first time this happened was in the time of Omar radiallahu anhu. And Omar radiallahu anhu said, so someone found the child during the time of Omar radiallahu anhu and Omar said, خُذْهُ وَهُوَ حُرْ وَلَكَ وَلَاؤُهُ وَعَلَيْنَا نَفَقَتُ Take him or her He or she is free because al asl fil insan fi bani adam al hurriya. The default in the children of Adam is freedom. Walaka walauhu, and yours is his wala. Yours is his wala or her wala. And wala is the right of inheritance. Wala is the right of inheritance. If the child did not have an inheritor, the child may grow up, have children, and so on, of his own, or a wife, or a husband. That's a different story. They, the inheritors will be entitled to their... But if the child did not leave behind the inheritors, you 
that's what Omar said. That's not what the madhab is. And that's not what the majority is. Okay, because the majority, uh, the madhab and the majority said that the right of inheritance would belong to Bayt al-Mal, House of Treasury. Because, وَعَلَيْنَا نَفَقَتُهُ It's upon us. Upon us, me, who, who's us? The state. نَفَقَتُهُ Upon us, meaning the state, his maintenance. Maintenance. So if the state is responsible for the maintenance of this child, so you will take the child, you will raise the child. You found the child, you take the child, you raise the child. But then you will get a stipend from the state every week, every month, every year, you'll get a stipend like a periodic stipend from the state to spend on the child. The state is responsible to spend on the child. But you take the child, you raise the child, state will be responsible for the sustenance of that child. And you, uh, you will have the wala. The, the majority said, well, if the state is responsible for the sustenance, the state gets the inheritance. So the child dies, the state takes the money of the child. If the child was not survived by uh, uh, inheritors, heirs, okay? Then the, then the sheikh said, وَنَفَقَتُهُ مِنْ بَيْتِ الْمَالِ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ مَعَهُ مَا يُنْفِقْ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ مَعَهُ مَا يُنْفَقْ وَعَلَيْهِ وَمَا خَلَّفَهُ فَهُوَ فَيْءٍ the sustenance of the foundling is taken from the treasury of the Muslims if there was not sufficient money left with the child for sustenance. Sometimes people would leave the ch child, but they leave money next to the child for their sustenance. You know, it's like got to be a lot of money to be enough for his sustenance until the child grows up. Um, but if you don't find that money, then the, the state will be responsible. But what if the state is not, uh, what if the state is an irresponsible state? <laughs> or the state, or there is no state? You know, it becomes a fard kifaya, it becomes a communal obligation, collective obligation, fard kifaya, ala al muslimin upon all Muslims, to spend on the child, including the finder. Including the finder. So, Everybody will have to pitch in and, and, and take care of that child of the Muslims if the state does not do it. Because it's fardi kifaya, it's communal obligation. Because it, it is certainly not befitting of a Muslim society to basically, uh, for this uh, child to uh, be left without sustenance and starve to death or something. It's certainly sinful. Okay, then. On the other hand, anything the founding leaves behind after the child's death is taken by the Muslim treasury. Because we said, if you're responsible to spend on him or her, then you inherit him or her if they were not survived by inheritors. Uh, whoever claims the paternity of the foundling will have the child attributed to him unless the former is a disbeliever, in which case the foundling will be attached to him in lineage without following his religion and the child will not be handed over to him. So we, somebody found a child and the state has the child or the person has the child and then some comes, someone comes and says, or even the one who found it or someone else comes and says, this is mine. This is called istilhaq, demanding attribution of the child to oneself. Demanding attribution of the child to oneself. If it is possible that it is yours, if it is possible that it is yours, you will be given that child. You're not going to be asked about where, you know, when did you have it, what, you know, where, whether you're married or not, or anything of that nature. The child will be attributed to you. Nowadays, we could use DNA testing and all of that stuff, you know, and, and, uh, but the, the, the idea here is uh, DNA testing would be used to complement, you know. Yet, if someone asks for a child and there is no monazia, you will give them the child. There is no, no one competing for the child. Uh, you, you will give them the child because, you know, establishment of paternity, establishment of lineage, 
is a good benefit in the best interest of the child. So if someone you know, demands attribution of the child to themselves and there is no contender, then you give them uh, the child. He said if, if this person is not a believer, the default for the child who is found in a Muslim state is that the child is Muslim. So he will follow that uh, unbeliever in lineage, not in religion. Given what? Given that the person does not have evidence it's their child. What if they have evidence it's their child? Then they take it. You know, follow the child in any lineage, religion, and everything. If they have evidence, that's, you know, that's clearly stated. Uh, have it in, in your book. So this is given that the, 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 the person demanding attribution does not have evidence does not have evidence that this child is theirs. And that's it. Take five minutes and then take your questions afterwards.